racks, run another one. All right, so we're back. We have our new show that's on the airwaves. It's called Six Views, mm -hmm. okay? And we have our guest here today. We have Destiny in the building. Okay. Top of the morning, sure to be on it. If I walk it, I talk it. If I run an option, if I hear it, I'm all in. We got to raid the deposit. We got to raid the deposit. We got to raid the deposit. Okay, mm -hmm. and she brought friends with her too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so Destiny um, spelled S- D S T N Y. So yes. no vowels. No. All right. No vowels. Okay. Buy one. <laughs> right? uh, on, on some on some uh, wheel of fortune shit. Mm. Now, before we even get started, I want you to introduce everybody who's there, who's here with you. Your, your girls from the left to the well, right. This is this is my team. Obviously, um, we're umbrella coded. Um, I founded umbrella coded. It's so obviously a sack out of um, the one umbrella mm -hmm. company. Okay. Corporation. Um, this is my girl. I've been rapping with Sass Seven Thirty from time. Okay. So, you know, we kind of just we're always together in, in that that whole rap thing. B is my my ex manager and my personal assistant right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she she's the one who just handles like the closer stuff with me and has to deal with all my bitching and shit like that. But I don't like it. But hey, nice. You know. Nice. So yeah, this is the closer set of the team right now, minus the producers and managers and all that. Dope, you know? dope, dope, dope. So this being our first interview that we're having here today, mm -hmm. um, let's get into a few things here. Like for somebody who's like just getting into your music for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Describe your style to like, in a, just a couple of sentences. Like, Well, I try, I try to stay different. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of think I'm further up ahead of my time. Like, I, I always make some tunes that I'd be like, when I hear that shit, like, four years later, I'm like, oh, shit, this shit could have rocked, like, now. But I wrote it four years ago. So um, I tried to stay different with my music mm -hmm. um, and keep it how I feel that my timing is, not, not what today's timing is, you know? Right, 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 right. And, like, how did you get into singing? And um, I've been singing from a long time since my dad's a pastor. Okay. My mom was a uh, evangelist, mm -hmm. so in church it was choir, singing for singing for God and stuff like that. And nice. it's always been a passion of mine, something that I wanted to do. Yeah. Just seeing a lot of other artists out there doing their thing and entertaining people, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you're from like the the West End. You're from like B Town, right? I was originally born in Toronto. Okay. I grew up almost like everywhere. My dad's a missionary, like I just said before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I literally grew up in like five different states. Mm. Um, more being um, Broward County, Florida. Okay. I, I grew there for about 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So tell me about that experience, because that's like a wild place from what, from what we hear up here in, in, mm. in Toronto, right? Yes. <laughs> what was life like out there, over there? Um, it's the fast life, mm -hmm. you know, um, everything is like, even compared to here doing music and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like there's a million artists out there Yeah, just, and they're all hungry. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I noticed in the difference, this is a faster pace. Like everybody's out there hungry, trying to get it, trying to make it, trying to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not to say that they're not doing that down here, no, but definitely. I think there's like the ratio, the percentage of people. It's a lot. It's a lot harder. Yeah. And even like for a place like that, what would be one of your fondest memories over there? 
I love the beach. <laughs> so and I love the heat. Mm. I'm bit anemic, so I don't like the cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over yeah, here yeah. is is pretty freezing. So I love the beach. I love the hot weather. The whole island me type of vibes of mm-hmm. being around them. That was, that was what I really appreciated about Florida. Yeah, and what was high school like? Like, did you go to high oh school God. over there or I went over to here? Million high school. Yeah, I was at, I was in high school over here in Broward County. Um, sorry. In Brampton, I went to Williams at one point, mm-hmm. um, Williams Parkway Middle School, um, and then North Park for a bit. And then I was in the States. I was I was at um, Everglades okay. High School in, in Broward County. I was, like, everywhere. I went to about, like, three different high schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, even with the moving around, right, like, mm-hmm. with, your, with your father being a missionary and everything, right, mm-hmm. Did you find it hard to make connections with friends because you were always moving from place to place? Yeah. Um, sometimes I didn't even want to make friends because I was like, yo, you know, I know I'm going to have to move at the end of the year. <laughs> like, yeah. So I was just like, you know, forget it. But um, along the way, yeah, I have I have mad friends in different, different areas and different states and different countries and stuff like that that mm-hmm. I still talk to. Every now and then, but yeah, that was always the hard part, knowing that you're gonna leave yeah. and that you gotta start somewhere brand new. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pretty. No, but uh, yeah, I can. Under- I that's that's. Uh, I it's a hard life. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's one of the biggest lessons that you felt that you learned through through all that time? Well, my mom did pass in uh, 2003. In blessings, Florida. blessings. And. Um, through that, I think that was probably my biggest lesson in lifetime because I had to really learn how to like control my like my anger mm-hmm. and not knowing where that anger was coming from. Yeah. So that had to be probably one of my biggest things dealing with and coming and, and being from Florida mm-hmm. and then like, coming back here. My mom's family is from Montreal. Right. So I just decided I after she was gone, I was like, oh, I want to be closer to her family and stuff like that, and I just. That was my last real memory of Florida. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. So you bring up Montreal. Did you start going to Montreal more often? I always been back and forth in Montreal. Okay. Um, I went to I went to high school around there, Riverside. Wow. Um, so, um, back and forth because between the um, my dad doing his his thing from um, country to country mm-hmm. and. Um, also, I was trying to be stable and going to school. Most of the, the two mo- main places, sorry, three main places that I stayed was here in Brampton, Montreal, mm-hmm. and Florida. Okay. So these are my three main spots where I knew I would always eventually come back to. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. pretty comfortable in Montreal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, Montreal's a unique city, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it brings me to another question. And, like, out of the three places, which one do you, f- which one do you prefer? I like T-Dot. Okay. Okay. I like the dot. It's like it's like a little mix of like in between there and in between there, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. especially right now I find like there's so much stuff going on right now for the dot. Like the dot has actually put itself on the map right now. Mm-hmm. With little like the artists and mad um actors and stuff coming up and actresses. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um Right now, especially for like film world and stuff like that, I find like Toronto's the spot to be in. You know, this is where it's all going down. So yeah, Hollywood I like North. this as as opposed to it being so extra fast, fast, fast over there, and then in Montreal where it's like, you know, that's the French music capital. Like mm-hmm. they they like their French They're music. Very dormant over there. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're kind of laid back over there. It's kind of laid back in Montreal. I find right here it's like a perfect. It's a perfect thing for me you know to be starting out of the toronto area mm-hmm. you know and what's your, one of your favorite things about toronto hmm. favorite things about, i you know it i was born here and i never got to actually experience this place like that yet um i love the view mm-hmm. like when i come and drive th- to come to um toronto city okay and you see all the the buildings kind of reminds you of New York. Yeah, yeah. I love that, especially at that midpoint in the day, like five, six o'clock, when the lights are going down and the street lights just come on. Yeah. I like that. Um, other than that, I really like this place because my family's here. So. Okay. You know, this is okay. this is home, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, with this whole music scene over here, right? Mm-hmm. Toronto's like a 
it has a big spotlight on it right now, yeah. right? And it's really competitive. What are, what are one of the things that you dislike about the music scene over here? I wouldn't call anything a dislike. I, hmm, deep. I don't think there's anything I dislike. I, I, I find like music is, is general everywhere. Like uh, there's no difference really in like the artists from here or there other than the fact that there's more. Mm -hmm. So that there's more competition around there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really have problems with in, in that sense of me feeling like something's wrong with the music industry right now oh. over here in Toronto. Well, then, one. What are one of the things you like, or, or one of your favorite things about it? I guess. Um, here in Canada, I love the fact that there's mad culture. Like, mm. there's so much different people doing this. It's not only your regular like hip hop boy doing it. Like, you, you find so many different people seeing so many different styles. Yeah. I find that to be super like unique. Dope. You know. Dope. Dope. Um, let's switch gears for a quick for a quick second. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, from my research, I see that you're a mother, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance motherhood with trying to work in this music industry, this crazy entertainment music industry? Um, I usually try to. I, I notice with the mu with the industry that I'm in, like the hip hop part about it, mm -hmm. and my kids being young, I notice there's a lot of messages out there that I don't really too tough like want my children to like be living life like yeah. but um honestly i just find like it, it, for us as adults and people that are teaching the younger generation out there we have to really watch what we're saying and the messages that we're coming out to them um this is the only thing that i really think of when it comes to my children and what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't want them to capture a message for me where it's like, as children, they don't understand. Like, you know, so it's like, they, they, they get this message like, yo, money is everything. You still watch your clothes and, and, and what you got and this is how you make it through life. But they're not actually capturing the real essence. The real struggle behind of, it. Yeah, you mm. feel me? So, um, <coughs> balancing it, it's not too hard right now because they're bigger now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When they were younger, I had to take a break. Yeah. And I had to really just focus on on them. But now that they're bigger, it's not it's not too hard of a struggle. They know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they they love it themselves. Yeah. They feel like they're going to be like driving in a limo one day to school or something. I'm like, listen. Like, <laughs> like it ain't even about that. But uh, I try to keep it very, um, I try to let them know a lot. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is not letting kids know yeah. what you're trying to tell them that they should be fearful about or not fearful, but they should watch out for. Yeah. You know, not explaining that to them is what causes them to go a whole different way. Like, I want to try that shit because it looks fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, so I try to always explain to them what's going on in the lyrics of the songs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So they understand, like, you know, some some things are about a gimmick. Some things is. Is real life. Some things is not, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in regards to your own music, like, are they, are are your kids listening to your music and giving you different advice on what you know? Because kids help you help us stay current, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So do they do they bump your music and be like, "Yo, mom, <laughs> I, I like this or I don't like that" kind of thing? Um, I never heard of I don't like. Shoot, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be like, what? <laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> nah, but. Um, they're always bumped for my music. I have my, my oldest daughter, I find these like the the the, um, the middle schoolers and the high schoolers are really into this hip hop and, and the now current music. Yeah. She's always like bumping my tunes and like trying to send it to her friends and stuff and you know. I never really get that like, oh I don't like this mm -hmm. type of vibe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. my children are like really they they've been they grew up on like everybody in the family just bumping music and doing it so definitely yeah. i think it's 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 something that's like in them it's not something that they would ever ask about like why do you do like they know me for doing that from yeah, time yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is all they know 
Well, you know, you, you come from a musical family, and that's something that we're definitely going to be getting to soon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. the, the, I'm sure they've been always hearing some kind of hip hop or R&B in their house. You know what I'm saying? Or reggae. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> um, just to switch gears, and then we're going to get into an, another segment real, real soon called uh, What Do You Think? Okay. But just to switch gears for a quick second. All right. This industry, as a woman, I know it could be a little bit harder because men, we don't have to deal with as many situations as y'all, right? We go around life, we just, for, for lack of a better word, run shit, right? Mm -hmm. But for a woman, I know it's harder for y'all when it comes to getting your music heard, you know what I mean? Getting taken seriously as an mm -hmm. artist. And then there's been a bunch of different things that's happened. You know what I mean? You got Bill Cosby, you got uh, guys like Harvey Weinstein and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever been put into one of those hashtag Me Too situations? I think, um, I think most women in this industry have. You know, yeah. they try to doubt it or not. Yeah, um, it's just subtle where they don't realize. I've definitely mm -hmm. dealt with it. I definitely have dealt with it. Um, people trying to, trying to get you to do things because they have an, a different, like, um, ulterior motive behind right, it, you right, know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I personally try to make sure that um, I always have something up front to show for it before I end up dealing with somebody that's going to ask me for something in return. Mm. You understand? But yeah, I've dealt with that. A lot of times, but a lot of people think sometimes too. I'm making a track for you. Now I can, now I can finesse you how I feel too because mm. I have your your track in my hands. Yeah, you know? try to hold a hostage. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely have dealt with that. 